Adam Savage here in my cave with a tool tip that involves poking at things. Yep. Um, I also frequently get a question as to, are there any legacy tools in my collection that have a lineage that go into my ancestry? And the answer is yes, I do. Uh, I have a couple of my father's screwdrivers. I have a few of his paintbrushes. And um, maybe one of my favorite pieces is I have my grandfather's awl. Now, an awl is basically a sharp point with a handle. Uh, there are many versions of awls, and I have many versions of awls. Uh, I cannot stress enough how important it is to have like a sharp, a sharp thing to stick into things. A, a, something to push through fabric, something to push through leather, something to mark a position between two things. Uh, and the many different form factors of awls. Here comes it. There, look at this one. I mean. That, that's almost like a drift pin. Uh, I'm here to tell you that I use awls on almost a daily basis. And every single time I resist making a pun about giving it your all, although I could not resist it here on the slate. Um, this is my grandfather's all. It is a beauty. It feels great in my hand and uh, I hope I never lose it. Uh, when. Savage Builds got robbed, they stole one of my dad's original screwdrivers that I had. And it was the screwdriver that I thought of as quintessentially his. It was an old uh, 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 Craftsman clear handle. They made a bunch of clear handled screwdrivers in the 70s and the 80s, and this was one of them. It had blue on it because at one point I painted a blue paint on all my tools so you could separate them. When you're a journeyman and you show up with your own tools frequently, you'll want to come up with a color scheme for your tools and mark every one of them with a little bit of that color so it's clear which is yours and which is not because tools can walk on a job site. That's one of the universal rules of a job site. So the more you have colors on them. Actually, I'll show you. I've been doing this forever. Wait, wait, wait. Where is it? Ah, here we go. At one point, I decided instead of going for color, I'll go for stripes. And this right here is the yellow and dayglow orange color scheme I had for years in the early 90s. This is literally my first cordless battery. And it no longer holds a charge, but I'm holding on to it because it's a, it's like it's legacy, man. I build thousands of things with these NICADs. Uh, and this was my color scheme. Uh, for my drills, for my batteries, for my tools, for everything. But I'm getting uh, out and beyond my, my purview here. I wanted to talk about pokey things like awls. See how different those two tips are? Uh, depending on the need, I may use one or the other. I may heat them up and stick them through synthetic fabric to make a nice hole that uh, is pre-cauterized around its, around its perimeter. Um, this one actually has some melted plastic because I used it to do that very thing just a few weeks ago. Um, suffice to say, you probably want more... Watch out, make sure you wear steel-toed boots. You probably want more than one all I'll include some links to ones that I like in the comments below. But this is always something that you could find at an antique mall. And frequently it's got some great old, look at that, the phone number. This is pre-prefix phone numbers. When you called and you said, uh, wow, yeah, you, you actually called a switchboard operator. That's how old this is. Um, antique stores, antique malls, great places to find your alls. And I did not mean to rhyme that, Lynn. Uh, that was just, that was freebie. Uh, thank you guys for joining me for this quick and dirty tool tip. Get thee and all, get thee to poking. I will see you guys next time. You know what? I, I don't want to end the all video just yet because I realized while I'm talking about, I, I might not have been specific enough. I, I consider this a completely necessary tool to have in one's workshop if one works with materials of, of nearly any kind. Whether you're a woodworker, a ceramicist, an all, or maybe even a couple of different sizes of all can benefit you. But you also, you'll have a need to poke things in other ways and that's where punches come in. Uh, this is a standard punch. It's got a knurled handle that you can hold on to and a fat top so you can give it a hammer. and. Varying degrees of thickness 
in different arms so that you can push out different things. This is if you had to remove a, a spring pin from some kind of mechanical arrangement, a punch like this is exactly how you do it. And I have many, many punches. I have in the past tended to be a little bit over vigorous with them and I can bend them, which is never a good thing to do. Uh, and I have them that go down very small. I'll actually show you my drawer of punches. Here are some of the more key punches I use going down very small. And I'm very careful with these guys because I don't want to hurt them. Uh, yeah, I got some nice, these blue ones were all gifts from Irwin Tool. Thank you, Irwin. Uh, and to be honest, I find, sorry about that. To be honest, I find I can't have enough punches around the shop. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe it's that I can't have too many punches. Uh, I've certainly had projects where some recalcitrant thing was pressure fit into something else and I broke one punch getting it out and I had to break out another punch. Um, I use the, ah, I use the punches often enough that they live over here among my regular kit of stuff that gets very frequently used. Um, but punches are of a piece with the awls. They're, they're, they're long pokey things for getting into places other things wouldn't get and giving you a mechanical advantage in those places that other materials and other things wouldn't get. It's a wooden stick is just not gonna do the same thing as an awl. Yeah. Uh, thanks for letting me add that little codicil at the end. I know codicil is not the right word, but you know what I mean.